You're listening to BQN. Assimilate the audio. Welcome, listeners and viewers, to What's the Tea Bed, a Star Trek universe podcast here on the BQN. I'm your host, Christos Generis. What's the Tea Bed is a weekly podcast where I interview members of the LGBTQIA plus community and allies, where we get to know our guests' trekdom and discuss current Star Trek news and speculation. Remember, you can watch Where's the T-Bev on our YouTube channel of the same name or listen wherever you get your BQN podcasts. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode with Jason Anderson. You listeners and viewers, you may remember at one point we were talking a lot about Star Trek novels and Jason brought up uh, Reunion from Star Trek The Next Generation uh, more so as an uh, audiobook. Um, and last week, as I drove to Vegas, I decided to take a listen. Um, it is narrated by Gates McFadden. So, how could you go wrong on that? But um, what a great story. I, I don't think after listening to it that I actually had read this book before. None of it came back to me. Um, so, I thought I had read it, but I guess I did not. But it's a great little story that has to take place somewhere in either late season three or very, very, very early season four of TNG because Wesley is still on the ship, but Beverly is back. So it's in that little that little time zone there. But it really surprised me. It was a great novel that really felt like just a really great episode of TNG and um, it fits kind of right in where uh, most of Picard's uh, bridge crew from the Stargazer is back and they're transporting to a ceremony on the Enterprise and kind of a, a murder mystery ensues. And I wasn't prepared for just how important Beverly Crusher was to the, to the story. So um, I did not get that at all from looking at the cover or, or, or reading the back. So um, I was kind of surprised by that. But um, anyways, really good novel. I highly recommend it. The audio book is just under three hours. So it is very, very, very easy to consume. That's kind of how I got it done already. So yeah, give that a listen when you have a chance. I'd like to share some feedback from last week's episode with Jason. William DeLong over on YouTube said, thumbs up to Rogue Elements. I just finished in this past week. Anything written by Peter David is fantastic. Vendetta, IQ, and Q and Lot are all excellent. Imzadi is fantastic, not just as a Trek novel, but as a novel in general. It is still the best-selling Trek novel of all time. Diane Duane and Diane Carey are also outstanding Trek lit authors. Older school, but very, very good. And he also says, Eleanor deserves his own series. I'm hoping he's in the Academy series. Um, thanks for those comments. Yes, I agree. Rope Elements was great, as we were talking about last week. And yeah, I'm kind of getting into some of these older Trek novels now, too, kind of in between my billion and one podcasts I listen to. Um, in response, though, to William's comments, uh, Charlie Wellman said he has to disagree with you on Imzadi, just to name a couple of things that are presented as romantic, but are actually gross and abusive. Deanna convincing Riker to do naked cuddle therapy as she made up as an excuse to get naked with him, but also she's a student and shouldn't be entering into an unsupervised therapeutic relationship with anyone. Riker constantly telling Troy that she doesn't know how she feels and that she actually likes him, even though she repeatedly says she's not interested, and the narrator agreeing with him. Also, there's fat phobia in the nude wedding scene. So yeah, it's a lot to unpack. I have not read Inzadi in like 30 years. So I'd have to go back and give that a, a reread and see uh, if I agree with that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, obviously a lot of things that uh, 
you know, we've evolved on in society in the last 30 years or so, especially with the Me Too movement. And over on the BQN Collective, Davey Willett said he that he wishes he was more into the novels. He was a big fan of the Peter David books when he was younger, but these days he feels like he doesn't have the time. I know what you mean. I like to listen to audiobooks, as we've talked about, but there's so many podcasts to listen to. It can be hard. All right. Well, I'd like to jump to this week's guest and introduce to you folks to Alex Hurtado. Bring Alex. In. Hey, Alex, how are you? Good. How are you, Christos? I'm doing great. Thanks for coming on this week. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, so, unexpected, but here I am. <laughs> yeah. So listeners and viewers, Alex is literally someone, he's probably the second guest I can say that I've had on the show, who I don't know. I met him <laughs> via Twitter and obviously through, you know, that's that's great because um, that's what the show is all about is getting to know people. So it's, a, it's fun having my friends on, but it's also fun bringing in completely new people because as we're going to go through our, our trekking to know, I'm not going to know anything other than I believe just by looking at the picture on the screen that Alex does like Uhura. <laughs> I do. I do. Um, actually, <laughs> uh, this picture was taken back in 2019, I believe. And it was actually the first con convention con. It was, it's Phoenix. I think it's Phoenix con um, that I, that I've ever attended. And um Reason for being was I saw the uh, email go out that it was her farewell tour and I was just not going to miss that. So got out my Betcom badge, put on my little pips and made my way down, down downtown to, to meet Michelle. And yeah, she was great. It was, it was awesome meeting her. Yeah, I got to meet her twice and it was it was so special both times. Um, yeah, it's always nice when a con comes to your town, isn't it? Like, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, I'm in the Phoenix area, so it's like literally Vegas con. I hear about it all the time. I don't know why I haven't made my way up there. Hopefully soon, sooner than later. But yeah, no, it, it's great when when the con comes to you. But yeah, no, she was amazing. She, I actually, when I met her, so I got to meet her twice that same day. Um, the first time was um, that picture with the, the back background and she got to sign some things for me. And um, she like the beautiful turquoise jewelry on. And I said, oh my gosh, I love your jewelry. It's so fabulous. And she basically was like, oh honey, I know, thank you. And I was like, oh my God, just just how I, I you know, you think <laughs> of when you're gonna meet her, how she's gonna be. And she, yeah, she was super pleasant, super funny. Um, yeah, I, I was super honored to have met her. Um, she always came across to me as so classy. Like she just like, she's so polite and, and just uh, so well-spoken in the way she speaks and, just a class act. I mean, just the, she has so much grace in the way she she moves and the way she talks, and yeah, it's just you know you, you definitely get that uh, that star quality from her, even just meeting her in person. I just love also how when the younger generation you know, discovers her and her input. So I have a younger sister who's um, getting into um, space, and you know she did a little intern at NASA and SpaceX, and. Um, she had no idea about Nichelle Nichols, and when she passed, I like made her watch. Have you seen the drunk history of Nichelle Nichols on Comedy Central? If you haven't, I, I, rec I recommend it. Anyone check it out. Comedy Central drunk history Nichelle Nichols. It is the greatest, and basically a rundown of her impact on like the NASA program, on Star Trek TV, like just everything she's done. And you know, anyone that you know, yeah. doesn't know anything about her, super digestible, and like I super young sister and super into it is posting it to all her friends. And like I said, just the, her impact on, on space and, and real space travel in real life, not just, you know, on screen. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, if you haven't, I, I will be checking out drunk history, but I have seen her documentary women in motion like twice. So, which is probably the very, very, very long version of the drunk <laughs> the history drunk thing that you're talking about. <laughs> but um, uh, but it, it, it's, it's very interesting nonetheless. And I, I, I like documentaries, so it, it was great to um, learn a lot more, especially about the NASA aspect of things, which I only kind of mm -hmm. knew about on the peripheral. Right, same here. I had no idea like how, her, how impactful she was to the program and getting it, it to be a more diverse program overall. So yeah. Just huge impact, huge impact. 
All right. So cutting through to these next pictures here, it looks like we've, we've made a little transformation over the years. Can you tell me about these? <laughs> so, yeah. So back in 2000, so the picture on the left, um, the, the more appropriate one was back in 2003. And it was the first time I had ever seen like a Star Trek costume um, being sold. So I, um, it was online. I think it was online. Yeah, I got it online. Had it mailed to me, didn't fit too well, but I still wore the heck out of it. Um, and then fast forward to having never worn it, 2019, I had the urge to go out, didn't have a costume, um, but I knew I had that in my closet. And so I literally got some scissors, cut it up. I had a sister who had a sewing machine and was learning how to sew. We put some zippers on it and actually made it a jacket and you know, went to my local gaily friendly store, got some some shorts a little there's a little harness underneath there put my pips on the harness and yeah made it gay and went out i had a great time yeah was, you went from like ensign I, to yeah. uh you know trek twink um <laughs> i wish i had boots you know the only thing the costume is missing is boots i so shout out to anyone who who um knows any good star trek costume cosplay boot makers because yeah I yeah could use there's some, could use some there's boots quite that. a yeah, there's quite a few ways to go about that. I mean, there's like a there's a certain model of floor shine leather boots that are 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 very close to screen accurate, at least for the the '90s era Trek. Um, and I I have a pair of those. Of course, now that I've gone vegan, I don't buy leather products anymore. So, but um, I've gotten creative in some other ways. Doc Martin makes some really cool vegan boots, and. Um, and and non-vegan boots <laughs> um, did you did you see speaking of boots did you see i forget who the maker was but recently there was some boot some manufacturer made a boot i think it was like based on strange new world oh yeah uh, they're they're gorgeous and obviously i i did normally i would have snatched something like that up in a heartbeat but yeah given that they are made of real leather i yeah passed on them so yeah but uh, no i i know some friends at bottom they look great I mean, do they oh jealous yeah FOMO. <laughs> So let's jump to trekking to know you, and uh, we'll start off with uh, the, there's our, our same questions that we ask every week, and, and listeners and viewers who have people who who are repeat listeners of what's the TBEV. I have a new question that I've added today, so hold hold on for that one. All right, what was your first contact with Star Trek? So I would say officially my first contact on the peripheral would be. Um, growing up, you know, it was a privilege to be able to like watch TV at the end of the day, you did your homework, whatever. And by the time that, that by the time came around, it was always at the end of the day and it was always the reruns of the Simpsons and the next generation. So before going to bed, those were like the two shows that I always caught. Um, the next generation honestly really didn't know what was going on. It was, you know, it was, and they didn't play the episodes in order because they were reruns. And so I did, had no idea what was going on. It was hard to catch to you know, figure out anything um, to catch on to stories and stuff. Um, and it wasn't until later in life, made a friend whose dad was really into it. And it was kind of like my introduction to sci-fi. It was a Star Trek, Star Wars introduction. Um, and this was probably around the time when Voyager was on. So uh, I think there was the break between Scorpion season one, or season four and five, I think. Scorpion one and two. Um, it was between three and four. Four, because that's four? how we got to seven or nine. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yes. You're correct. Um, so that that was, I think, when I got into it, um, TV wise, it was, you know, it was um, uh, UPN all the time, the commercials, and that's kind of how I got sucked <laughs> in. I was like, well, if the if the reruns were kind of interesting, let's see what catching it live is. And literally, I was sucked in. It was like, oh, there, there's a female captain. Okay, this is kind of interesting. This is different. You know, it's not some old white bald man. Um, let's check this out. And literally every week I'd catch it. I remember if I had leave town, someone at home would have to like record it on the VCR for me because otherwise how else would you catch it? Um, and yeah, that Voyager was how I got in and was hooked ever since. That's awesome. Um, how old are you if you don't mind my asking? I am going to be 36 in August of 2023. Okay. Yep. So awesome. I'll, be, I'll be 36. Next 35. Year. So that tracks because I'm, I'm, I'm 45. So like I definitely hit TNG like probably as you were hitting Voyager almost kind of mm -hmm. like like in very similar ways. So 
I get it was it, interesting. But... It was interesting because it was, and going into it when I went into it, also you you didn't really get the backstory because it wasn't you know like it is now in Discovery. You get the recap of you know previously on so and so, and so it was kind of trying to catch on and figure out all right what is this you know trying to figure out the Federation, trying to figure out Starfleet, trying to make sense of it all. And so yeah, it was it was, it was kind of a ride. What is your favorite Trek theories? So it definitely I would say. Voyager only because that was like the one that I watched as it was as it was airing. Um, it was what got me into it. Um, I have a soft spot for Discovery just because it's new and fresh and they're able to like do new things. Um, I have not caught up with the latest season on it. Um, I'm currently um, real. So I started this thing earlier this year where I was going to rewatch all of Star Trek from the original series, which is the series I never started. So um, I haven't watched the newest, newest stuff. Um, so Discovery, I would say Voyager for sure is my favorite. Discovery, just because of the newness, I actually like new track. I, I don't think it's that terrible. But And then I would say third, if I have to say third, I have like a soft spot for, for, for uh, Enterprise, just because it's like not, not for what it is, what it could have been. It was like just getting there and then we were cut, you know, like it was getting its footing and then and so, yeah, those are my three. I have to say those yeah. are the three. Sophie's choice. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah, I agree with you on Enterprise. Season four was amazing and mm -hmm. five would have been great. And we would got to see that new refit and the uh, refit. The, that's the, what yeah. breaks my heart. Yeah. The Eagle Moss model of the refit. Oh my gosh. It is amazing. And I, so what, one, yeah. I'm trying to get my hands on one, but two, just you could totally see where they were going. It looks like the constitution class, like it's, it's. Well, yeah, they when I think Doug Drexler was the, the designer who came up with that design. Um, I know you told me off air that you haven't seen Picard season two, mm -mm. but that Eagle Moss that you just described shows up as a toy for a young Picard and. Little, spoiler. little, little, little spoilery, but not like it's not going to ruin the story for you. Um, but that, but fans were excited because that design became canon because it was fucking mm. issues in a Trek episode. That's nice. Why I was, why I was, um, kind of a little nod back to Enterprise in a in a really positive way. Uh, let's see, we talked about your favorite series. What is your favorite Trek episode of all time? So favorite Trek episode, again, Sophie's Choice. I have two episodes okay. that I can watch for two specific reasons. Um, one that I can watch and it's just a fun episode would be Counterpoint uh, Voyager. And it's uh, where Janeway gets uh, intercepted with the DeVore and she has to hide the telepaths. And um, just, just the fact that she's able, like we get to see her there's like the little romance angle that we never really get to see except in the last like later on um and also outsmart a man you know what i mean she like she was she thought that this guy was you could tell that she was into him but she wasn't gonna let him outsmart him you know she's not gonna let a man outsmart me um and then just how it ends at the end when he's just like kind of with his mouth on the floor and he's and not kind of trying to like pick himself up and just tell everyone shut up I just, let's just, just get out of here um, so that's the fun one that I like to watch just because it just shows how badass of a Janeway, uh, how badass Janeway is. Um, and then the other one is Inner Light, The Next Generation. Oh, yeah. Just recently watched it um, and reminded me why. Like, it, it gives, makes you, like, it may, makes me cry every single time, yeah, honestly, every single time at the end. And it just you're just like, oh. But also just because um, kind of, like, gives you, makes you think, like, is this kind of like what could happen to earth if we don't get our act together? You know, the way the environment and the way we're treating earth, like, is this, you know, it's one of those good episodes that just, you know, gives you all kinds of feels. So you think about the environment, you think about, you know, your family, your legacy, what you leave behind. Um, it, it just makes it all kinds of emotions. So when you want to, when you feel something, definitely put that one episode on and you'll, you'll have tears by the end of it. Cause I definitely have every single time. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's several episodes of Trek that, that can get that response. Um, um, the other podcast I'm on, All Good Things, we just covered the chase from TNG and the monologue that the the alien gives at the end of that episode about the origins of humanoid life form and whatnot, and tracing back to the species and whatnot. It's it's so Roddenberry esque, and mm, so yeah. it's, it's just such a good allegory for 
human beings on this planet to, that you know get along. We're all human, you know. So um, yeah, I love Trek that has a good message and also evokes good motion emotion to it. Yeah, Inner Light. It's funny. I avoided that episode for the longest time because I used to think it was boring. Um, that maybe that's the kids' point of view to it. But mm -hmm. as an adult watching it, it hits, I, different. It, it hits so different. It's a mature adult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. Those are all good stuff. I like that you're also, you know, you know, Voyager's your jam, but you're a little all over the place, which is great. It's a very eclectic, uh, very eclectic like trek dumb. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and like I said, and, and when the questions like, "What's your favorite?" Like, I, I like them all. Like, there's not a series that I, I can't watch. Like, you know, yeah. it's it's all it's all good to me. Um, oh, I tell so. people this all the time. It's like these questions are like actually designed to get us talking about Trek. So, um, <laughs> if you say I have two favorite Trek episodes, tell me about both of them, please. That's because it's, we're just talking. Um, well, so, and actually, well, there's a shout out, honorary shout out to another one. I can't think of the right. name right now. Um, but it's the the Janeway one with the clown, um, where fear. And the reason I like that one is just because of the, oh. the quote um, the 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 purpose of fear is to be conquered. And like that, that's always stuck with me. Like that, that's another one. That's, that's like, like the life lesson one. That's the creepy one with Harry Kim, right? Yeah, it's Harry Kim. Yeah. It, they find a planet yeah. with a bunch of sleeping pods and Harry Kim, and they get sucked into the machine to, to try to see what's going on in the machine. And it ends up being this clown that, you know, is controlling the hologram, the simulation. And, yeah, I'm trying to think of the name. It'll come to me. Watch the middle of the okay. episode. I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. um, but shout it out when it comes. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's honorary shout out to that episode because I used to watch that episode all the time because like it just just the, that 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 fear, like conquering fear at the end, like it was kind of like in a just fading way, very theatric. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite Voyager is the Omega Directive. Mm -hmm. uh, with and, seven, it's, a seven, it's more of a seven to nine story, but it's it's got some good Jane way. I mean, she has, what did she say? Like when the whole, I think I like that episode because first and foremost, it becomes more like, because they're technically on Federation orders in that episode, it becomes a little bit more like a regular Star Trek episode, mm -hmm. like a TNG yeah. with, cause it's like, okay, we basically have our orders. The Omega directive is in, is, is in play and Jane way knows exactly what she has to do um, versus, you know, just kind of whatever happens. Um, but, um, she says, and it's the way Kate Mulgrew delivers this line. But she's like, a prime directive has been rescinded for the duration of this mission. And it's like, it probably means nothing on paper, but the way she says it. So it's, 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 bad like, it's badass. <laughs> it's badass, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's actually another good episode for another reason. I, you just remind me. So I'm also a huge uh, Trek gamer. I enjoy a lot of the Trek games. And oh, yeah. there's actually a nice tie-in with the Omega Particle. And I, I can't remember if it's Star Trek Armada yeah. 1 or 2. Yeah, is it, it Armada was Armada two? 1. One, one. I think it was 1 and 2, but more 1. Okay. And the, yeah. they totally, it was basically the Omega Directive, you know, Particle situation it's, Yeah, on an in-game. So crossovers like that, I super enjoy as well. So that's, that's another good episode for many, many reasons. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So what is your favorite movie? And of course, I say... This includes all 10 original movies and the three Kelvin verse are all in play. Um, so my favorite movie, I would say the one that I could watch, that I rewatched the most would be First Contact. Um, it's the first one that I actually saw um, that the friend, the dad friend who was like had a VHS and he's like, oh, let me show you a Star Trek movie that just came out. And I was like, oh, OK, let's check it out. And yeah, it was like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. Like it's a yeah. full feature film. Um, and then of course, realizing that there's a whole catalog to discover, um, and explore. So yeah, that would, I would say that would be my first favorite movie. Um, honorary shout out to Nemesis. Um, I, I don't know why I, I also enjoy that one. I saw that one in theaters, actually. I think that might've been the first one actually caught in theaters. So that's probably why. And then first er, generations, just because of course, who doesn't like to see a ship, you know? Oh Yeah. 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 And it's it, oh, yeah. it's kind of like a way, way to send her off. Like there was no other way to like, how, how are we going to move on to the next generation of ships? And so, yeah, yeah. I, I think they did a good job at so, ending this, the D's timeline. There was a, there is still a book called the Star Trek, the next generation technical manual. Mm -hmm. And it came out 
um, I'm going to guess around probably season four or five of the show while it was airing. But in that book, it has like the schematics of how the saucer section would crash land on a planet if it had to. And so it is not literally. Like and, Actually, I've seen it. I've seen it. It's not. Yeah. Like, yeah. But it's like very it gentle. A, yeah. So it was. Yeah, exactly. Like, a, yeah. Well, it probably wasn't meant to be as damaged as it was in the schematic. But they really, could, you know, it suffered a lot of damage. Um, but I just thought it was kind of like just when I was watching Generations for the first time, I kind of got this feeling that that's what was going to happen. I just, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and had actually, I not seen that in there, I would have been completely surprised. <laughs> I'm actually um the 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 have you, uh, speaking of generations, I was just thinking I was sad about the Eagle Moscow situation. I don't know if you've covered any of that, but yeah. um in a, in other podcasts, but I actually signed up for the um the build the Enterprise D, and so I was really looking forward to like reenacting the crash and just like see, you know feeling it out and just and so I'm kind of bummed about that. It, um, Hoping that they get back on track. Did you get anywhere into that? I got, so I have like the first, and I haven't even opened all the kits to be honest, because I got super bummed, but I have, I think I have like a good four or five boxes and each box has like six kits. So I, I, I think I have a chunk of the saucer section that I could put together if I started to put together. So mm -hmm. maybe in a future, if you, maybe a future episode, I'll show her up, show her up and see yeah. how far I can get with her. But I think they've, I've, I've listened to some podcasts where they've interviewed some of the former, what is now former management of Eagle Moss, Eagle Moss. And um, I think there's going, there, there, there is still a lot of inventory that's out there for Eagle Moss. And I think that's going to go up on a website to be liquidated. So like every Trek person and their grandmother is going to be watching Everyone. for that. And you better pounce when it happens <laughs> yeah. because it'll be your last chance to maybe get some of those ones you didn't get. I was at, um, I was at Star Trek Las Vegas this year and they were literally going for double already. And, it, and that had all just happened. Yeah. So, it's like, well, I had heard somewhere that they were going to, someone else was going to pick it up. So that's my hope yeah. and dream that someone picks it up because it's, it's an awesome project. Just the whole idea of building your own, you know, enterprise D. And then I got some of the cool stuff. Like I got, I got the, the shirt and it's like a Utopia Planitia mm -hmm. sh yard shirt. It's super cool, like cool little things like that. So I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah, I hope they bring it back. So yeah. shout like out those. to anyone who's listening. <laughs> yeah. We want it. Um, Awesome. All right. Um, who is your favorite character of all time? My favorite character. So yes. I would say, I think it's not a, like a person. I would say Voyager the ship. And Ooh. why is it was literally like a home to these people for seven years. Like it did so much for them. Like the episode, the year of hell, like that was such a hard episode to watch because like it is. it's, it's, so beat it's, up. it's getting the crap beat out of it. Um, and so, but in the fact that Janeway was like, listen, this is our home. And at the end of the episode, I'm like, yeah, like this, this, this ship is like a character. The ship is a, a, you know, it's, it's, it's a character. Um, and it got them home eventually, you know, she, she broke yeah. some temporal laws to get them, but, she, but that ship got them home. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would say that Voyager, and I'm just obsessed with it. It's just like, like I said, being the series that got me into it, just being a cool ship. It's sleek. It's like a sleek galaxy, you know, whatever. It's not, it's not, but yeah, it's just like, I'm just obsessed with this. So I would say that would be my, my favorite character. If I, I love your answer to that. I mean, the Enterprise itself has always been referred to as a character, but mm -hmm. I've never heard. And so obviously Voyager can easily be a character too. And you're right. Um, and it's a little bit more special for them because it literally was their only home, their only option mm -hmm. really for a home for, for those seven years. So, um, like and in that. the series, uh, it was the first time we got like a bunch of different shots, like CG, cool CG shots that we didn't get to see before. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, TNG, we were very limited, kind of felt kind of see the same shots over and over again, a lot of times in that show. And um, how we even though only saw saucer separation a few times because it was quote unquote so expensive to do. Um, if they made TNG um, even 10 years later, you know, when like say when Voyager was on, we probably would have saw that happen more often mm -hmm. because of the, the CGI ability. Um, who's your favorite captain? 
Uh, Janeway's hands down. She's she's awesome. That's she's just like uh, hands in hand. Uh, she's like um, obviously she's she's part of Voyager. I feel like almost. You know what I mean? She it's her um, it's not her baby, but you know it's something like along those lines. So, uh, but no, Janeway just um, I, out of all the captains, she just seems like she's a smart cookie. You know what I mean? She she's oh. a good leader, but as a smart you know she's a science backer she's a scientist before she was she wanted, wanted yeah. to be a captain and so just um yeah i would say janeway hands down easily i can go on and on and on and i can't wait to meet kate mulgrew like that's on my to-do list like yeah i yeah. cannot wait she i am um, i'm going on the star trek cruise in a few months and so she's jealous. on the cruise and i've met her a few times but my, my thing with Kate Mulgrew is we never get a good picture together. She always messes mm. it up. She's always very <laughs> stiff. But, but I have friends that have amazing pictures with her. So I'm hoping on the Star Trek cruise, maybe we'll be a little bit more relaxed and we can get like that awesome picture. Yeah, um, no, I heard about her being, <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I heard about being on this cruise and I was so excited. Like I tried really hard to make it to this. It would have been my first one, but it couldn't make it this year. But hopefully she does more because I've seen pictures of, the, of like the actors and stuff on these cruises. And it seems like such a fun, fun and yeah. wild time. It's it, it, last year or this year, however you want to say it was my first. Um, and mm. I, I literally was signed up for the next year before I got off the boat. Like, <laughs> nice. of course, they give you a lot of incentive to do that. But um I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm um, not coming back. So, yeah. Um, awesome. I was telling um, somebody on this show a couple of weeks ago about um, a book called The um, the Autobiography of Catherine Janeway. And it's, um, it's, it's a pretty amazing book, but don't, don't read the book. Get the audio book because the audio book came out like about six months later after the book and they got Kate Mulgrew to read the book. So mm -hmm. it's literally like, I mean, we're getting a lot of Janeway now in Prodigy. So we're kind of got, we got that. But when we first got, when that book came out, it was like the first time we had Janeway in like 20 years. And so it was like, it was really good to hear her read a book in character as Janeway again. Uh, we are seeing her on Prodigy now, which is great, especially in this new, this new back season back half of season one and admiral janeway literally is continued now in the show not just a hologram but um yeah pretty Read i'm actually i'm actually breaking my my rule of seeing things in order and actually tomorrow um hanging out with my little six five six year old niece um and we're gonna watch prodigy so i'm excited to finally finally see some new track for the first time in however long it's been but yeah so I'm excited to see Prodigy. I'm excited to see Janeway again. And, yeah, I give you a lot of credit for restraint because I could not <sighs> so just hard. pause it's watching so Utrecht so while I try to go learn something I should know already, like I season know, two know, of Deep Space I know, Nine. I know, I know, I know. I'm excited to see <laughs> Deep Space Nine. I've only seen it um, like twice. And like, you know, us Trekkies, we've seen it like so many times. And I've seen episodes here and there um, that are favorites, but but not a whole sitting through um multiple times I, like just twice so i'm excited it's been a while since i've sat through deep space nine yeah i i i tend to start my ds9 rewatches with like season four and on and mm. so like seasons two and three especially I, i'm traditionally pretty weak and i i went on one of our other shows here on the bqn network a, a couple months ago and it was, it's a Star Trek trivia show, but for the episode that I was on, he chose only to ask questions from season two of Deep Space Nine. <laughs> it was that myopically focused on, and I got my ass handed to me. And it's like, really, we couldn't be, I couldn't be on the Klingon episode that you just had. And, you know, he has all the other ones and I'm sitting there just like writing off the answers like that. It's like, it's okay. He, he 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 made the show a little easier after after that whole debacle. Love you, Davey. Um, all right, we're going to ask in the middle of all the questions here. I'm going to ask my new question, and who is your Star Trek crush? Now, this can be like they don't have to be your crush today. It could be like Captain Kirk in the original series was my crush, and I doubt that that's your crush. But even if it is, it's okay. Um, but so yeah, any. You know, easily, easily Connor Trainer, Commander uh, Trip, Tucker. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know. Uh, I have a thing for Southern know. boys. I think I have a thing for Southern boys, oh, and he was no. just like, 
you know, I, it, I, I, it, I was when when Enterprise was airing, I was all about all about trip. <laughs> Like, they, yes, and, they, and then they and then they put them in the underwear and stuff in those scenes and i'll make you all are doing this on purpose like come on you know gay people are watching this too you know <laughs> they were doing that for women and gay men and they were putting um you know um to paul in nearly naked as much as they could too they were really trying right. to that was some of the criticism of star trek then was that they were trying to sex yeah. it up but yeah um and so, so hands down him and Oh, and go then ahead. just sorry, an honorary mention to Anson because I recently decided to go grave and tweeted a picture and tagged him. He shouted out, it was like, nice start. So I always had a crush on him too. And he, the fact that he acknowledged me on Twitter made my life. So he's a second, he's an honorary shout out as well for crushes. Was, I, well, I've not answered this question because it's a new one. So I would probably say Anson Mount for me as well. I got to meet him at STLV, I think in 2019. Um, it, it was like basically right after season two of Discovery. So he had, you know, been on that. There was no, there was no Strange New Worlds yet. But getting to meet him, oh my God, when I got up to him and looked, it, he's tall and he's built and he's got a nice smile, but he's got these blue eyes and like you're suddenly standing like right in front of him and you're looking into those eyes and you're just like, yeah, there's probably nothing I wouldn't do for you. <laughs> and he's like, he's probably like, I give him a lot of credit for being seemingly what a nice guy he is because he probably has had that effect on a majority of people for most of his life to be that, that handsome and that, you know, that gorgeous right. and have mm -hmm. those piercing blue eyes and, people swoon on you and you know um but he doesn't seem to be full of himself at all no he seems super cool like i said just a shot he gave me a random person on twitter a shout out for mentioning his yeah. mount like he was he seems like a super chill dude well i think i know the answer to your next one but i'm going to ask you anyway what is your favorite starship uh, uh obviously voyager for many reasons and actually um I'm, I'm very excited. I recently was able to snag a Voyager J model. So I'm really looking forward to opening that up. So just to see oh, how, wow. how she's progressed. And I can't believe it held off this long. Kind of my OCD-ness of like, I, should I wait now? Or should I wait till I get to like the newer seasons of Discovery and, and then open, have my own unboxing there? I, I don't know. But yeah, well, uh, hands down sure Voyager. You... Oh, sorry. Shoot me, your, shoot me a picture of that when you open it up. I want to see it. Oh, for sure. Or, yeah, or, but no, or... I or if they tweet him, <laughs> but no, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll sure you get that. Yeah. No, I think it's pretty. I like the, the I like, I, I think they did a good job with the, with the, um, cause she's, she's up there, the, the box. They, they, they did a good job with like keeping Voyager looking like Voyager, but like in the 32nd century, right? Does that take it there? Yeah, 32nd century. So yeah, yeah. Voyager for sure. I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's almost like Jay. not only is it a, so as they go from the Constitution class to the Excelsior class, to the Ambassador, to the Galaxy, and even the Sovereign class, for the Enterprise, there's that same look and feel and design. And I'm really even excited about this new Titan A, which is a Constitution, Neo-Constitution class, and is very reminiscent of the, the movie Refit Enterprise. Um, so yeah, the fact that they're keeping like the Intrepid class for Voyager and kind of keeping some of that throughput all the way through to the J. That's pretty cool. It also, I don't know if you um, ever looked into Brit the Star Trek bridge crew, the ship that they use on that, the, the Aegis also looks like that of that era. It's a, it's a, it's a JJ Abrams era game, but um, it's like VR super cool. You're actually on. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. People. It's uh, it's Kelvin universe, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. But they, they have like, like a, don't they have a TNG plug into that now? Yes. So I actually went on there, I want to say like a month ago, just to check it out. So it's a, it's a TNG plugin and you basically get chased around with the board cube and you have like four friends and you're like trying to figure out like how to get all these pieces of, of different pieces of puzzles, basically from different planets and you put them together and you can defeat the board. Right. Um, problem is when there's no friends online to play with, like you're, you're stuck with an AI crew and they got rid of like their IBM Watson where you can actually like yell commands to the AI crew and they actually do stuff. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of sad. You're just on the ship and you're just like, and it's pretty because they got the license directly from CBS and Paramount to, to do the, the ship and stuff. So it's um, the Aegis, which is like the Kelvin universe ship that you can see. They actually have the original series bridge, which is really cool. 
um, and you actually get to the control. The controls are super hard to use because it's like the jelly bean looking things. And then yeah, the next generation, the the D. So shout out to anyone yeah. who still plays it on a on Xbox or PlayStation Four. I need a bridge crew. <laughs> I might pick it up. I actually had a PS4, but I don't know why I just barely used it. But I just literally unboxed a, my PS5 today. So, oh, I, cool. I'm, yeah, I'm like, I have, it came with that new God of War Ragnarok game. Mm. I've got a couple of friends already throwing some games at me. There's another game that you and I are going to talk about in a little bit that's coming soon that I'm be all about. And I have some singing ABBA game because why not, right? <laughs> right. Uh, oh, and 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 I'm I I do play Star Trek online, so I might um, may yeah. jump back on that for a little. You haven't played it in a while, but I'm feeling like that might be fun. Yeah, I actually caught on to the bug when it first came out, um, and then fell off because it was not really stable. And then picked it up actually earlier this year, maybe late last year, and it's actually pretty good. There's a lot of references to good episodes and some of the the missions that they send you on. So shout out to Star Trek Online. You guys are doing a good job out there. Keeping it All up right. to date. Star Trek Online. All right. What is up? So what does Star Trek mean to you? And I, I'll let you answer that, but I feel like you've talked a lot about that a little bit. All right. But yeah. Um, so I guess high level, what it means to me, I'm, it's kind of, um, asked, it makes me feel like there's hope for the future. You know, there's, there's something to look forward to. We get caught up in the doom and gloom of every day, but like, we can zone out to, to this, you know, future place. And, and, and then to know that it's not perfect, but you know, it's still better than what it is today. Um, so just, you know, hopeful. And then also, I guess growing up, I kind of, um, I think it prepared me just to be amongst different types of people and to get along and not even, not, not to even see the people, people as different, you know? So going into high school, it was funny. Cause like, um, or even my elementary school was was open concept and then from one, one year to another we went to like this building with corridors and like and so it felt like a very starship environment to me and I'm like oh my god I'm on a starship now and I have all these different people that I have to interact with so to me it was kind of like if these people in the future can get along like let's let's do it let's start it now and then also just like on a fun side note just seeing the things that have come out of Star Trek like the flip phone you know the reference of like how Star Trek in real life are coming. Um, right. Or Surrey. Yeah, Surrey is like our modern day computer. So it's, yeah, Star Trek to me is like what we're going for. Like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's literally, it's like your background. And let yeah. me look at your background. <laughs> and so, I mean, that. so that's the thing. Like, I, I see something on Star Trek and I'm like, I can't wait till that's actual thing. And then people are like, well, really? I'm like, flip phones, come on. Or tricorders. Like, every time a new smartphone comes out, I'm like, it's closer and closer to being a tricorder. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's, like we're, we're we're getting there and so yeah it's just it's kind of like a an outline to the future something that i can look forward to people are like think people may think it's dumb but like to me it's like kind of like someone left the script for someone to find and like this is what we have to look forward to guys well said well said i love that you were actively approaching high school differently because of star trek influence i think i that that tracks a little bit for me too so that's pretty cool well, that is the end of trekking to know you this week. That that was really fun. Um, like yeah, I, said, I enjoyed really it. Enjoyed doing that with somebody who I don't know. <laughs> now I feel like I know you. <laughs> at least, uh, at least I know about your Star Trek. Um, we're gonna jump into some of this week's news. Uh, really, kind of sad to report that um, um, Star Trek Two actress Kirsty Alley passed away this week at seventy one from a very quick illness that none of us knew she was sick um and um obviously just to hear that she was dead um was a little shocking i think um so aside from her role as savage she's also famous for the look who's talking movies uh cheers probably her biggest role was playing rebecca howe on cheers veronica's closet fat actress um uh, drop dead gorgeous <laughs> she has a little cult classic there and she's got a fun role in that so so um she's even in this movie called sibling rivalry with carrie fisher from like 1988 that i like just because it's carrie fisher um but anyways um kirsty was our first and original savic and that is her tie to star trek 
Um, Alex, what did you think about Kirsty and 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 Savic? I think Christy did a great job um, as Savic. You know, you. Uh, it's funny because I didn't get into the, the original movies until later in life. Um, and then when I saw her, I was like, oh my gosh, that's the lady from Look Who's Talking. I was like raised on that movie. My mom would put it on VCR and on repeat. And so I grew up on Look Who's Talking 1 and 2. And so, um, yeah, she did a good job. Um, she, you know, added her little flair to, to, the, to the role. But, you know, and I, I always go back on it and look on it on her role as like, you know, you have the big actress that comes into the role and are they going to butcher the, what a Vulcan is? And and for the most part, I think she did a great job. You know what I mean? Um, I enjoyed her role. Yeah. Um, I think I've, I've, I've said this before, so I won't belabor it too much, but Star Trek two is big, my big entry into Star Trek really fandom. Pretty much after that, I was, I was there and Savik was probably my original my original favorite character, especially from that. And I always say it's because gay men love strong women. Um, but um, yeah, I, that was, that was Savic. I like that Savic, especially because when Kirsty was playing her, the note, the backstory was that she was half Romulan, half Vulcan. It was never mm-hmm. stated on screen in Star Trek II, but that was the backstory um, for the character. And it's also, like why you see in the when in Spock's funeral scene, Savic is actually crying a little bit, and yeah. Vulcans don't cry; they don't show emotions. Well, that's the Romulan side. Um, when Robin Curtis came along in Star Trek Three, Leather Nimoy was directing and, and had her play the role straight up Vulcan as he would play Spock, and um, so that's why uh, Robin Curtis's Savic is very uh-huh. different. Well, no, I was going to say, I think that that's new to me, maybe in a lot of people that that she was supposed to play a half Vulcan, half Romulan. And, and if knowing that, it explains a lot. I mean, the, the crying thing and, and you know, she she was Vulcan. Like I said, she she played, she had a Vulcan, but she played a Vulcan, but with her own flair. And, I, you know, knowing that, that little piece of background makes a lot of sense in, in the way that she portrayed her. Yeah, there were so many other opportunities too. So we didn't get her in three because of, it, I think it boiled down to money. That there's people argue about that from time to time, but I think it was about money. But what most people don't know is um, in Star Trek VI, the undiscovered country, um, the role of Valeris was actually Savic. And um, they wanted Kirstie Alley to return to play the role of Savic. And they didn't want Robin Curtis back, apparently, but thought they would. Oh. They wanted Kirstie Alley to reprise the role. Uh, again, um, and I think you know, Could having you not had the, yeah, and, and and then had her be, but she would have been a villain still. I mean, she was still set to be mm-hmm. the the villain, and or or you know, I don't know. Um, no, but that would have been hilarious. interesting. They could have they could have tied in the Romulan thing, maybe somehow, like brought that back in. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That could. Oh, oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. You're right. Like, like oh, she's part Romulan too. Of course, she's doing this shit. Mm-hmm. Um, that would have been amazing. And this is some fan fiction that needs to be written there. Yeah. Uh, but Kirsty wouldn't do it, and that resulted in us just getting. Um, they just instead of having a third actress play Savic, because they weren't interested in Robin Curtis at all. Like, they, if it wasn't going to be Kirsty, it wasn't going to be Robin either. So instead of going, um, so they cast Kim Cattrall. To play the role, but which like, is no, another queen, not, yeah. Let's not do Savic again, let's just make this a new character who's basically Savic. Right. <laughs> there is another episode, um, of TNG that Kirstie Alley was supposed to be in, um, as a cameo. Um, the, the, the episode Cause and Effect, where they're in the temporal causality loop, and then Frazier comes out, uh, Captain Bait in, mm-hmm. in his ship there, that, at the end. yeah. That would have been interesting, that would have been funny. Actually. Yeah, Kirstie Alley was supposed to be Savic and be his first officer standing next to him in that cameo shot. Ooh, because that would Cheers have been so was, good. Yeah, Cheers was literally shot on the same lot as TNG. They were like neighbors, I guess. So um, it would have been so cool just to have her even just make that cameo in cause right. and effect or, or return in Star Trek VI. But none of that ever happened. And of course, Kirstie's one and lone tie to Star Trek will always be Star Trek Two, um, which was, you know, the movie that saved the whole franchise. So right, uh, right. Yeah. Well, cheers to Chrissy. 
Yes. Cheers to Kirsty. Part of the pun. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about my favorite thing to talk about. Star Trek Picard um, season three. Uh, things are starting to heat up for that um, as you know, we've had a few trailers, but as of recording today, we are 68 days away from the premiere, which is February 16th. And um, there's some presses starting for the show. I, the early of uh, Den, Den of Geek ran a uh, article, uh, uh, a cover story on uh, Picard season three. And a couple of new pictures got dropped, including this new picture of Gates McFadden as Dr. Crusher. Um, and um, on top of that, this week, yesterday, was Michael Dorn's birthday. And in honor of Michael Dorn's birthday, Paramount dropped a new picture of Michael Dorn as Worf. And I will click to that now. So there's a better picture of Worf. We've only had like the one shot and two or three very quick clips in a trailer. But here's a nice good steal. Um, um, I had somebody point out to me, I'm not this good with Klingon symbols but uh, he's still wearing the symbol for the house of marta wharf just looking very old much older and statesmanly here and then here's a better shot of that beverly crusher picture and all i can say is she looks that jacket is so reminiscent and we of the away team jackets from star trek two and three um like that uh kirk and mccoy and kirstie alley savick wore down on two Genesis, um, Alex, what do you think of these 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 new these new promo shots for Picard? So I nerd out on like little details, like the transporter room. Like, where are they? Like, what ship are they on? Like, what you know? Is it I, for the Enterprise for the um, Picard shows? I'm just looking for like the big reveal of the Enterprise, like what the current version of the Enterprise. So in my nerd head, they're on the Enterprise, and um, but no, the pictures yeah. are cool. I think they did a good job with the, the how they aged the character, especially with Worf. I was a little concerned um, with like the whole Discovery Klingons uh, the, the little, being a little controversial, and that were they going to make him like look like the Discovery Klingons? Are they going to keep him tried and true? Oh. So I, I like his sash though too. I, the thing I like about the sash is it looks very reminiscent to what he used to have on T TNG in that whole era. I was nervous that they were going to like bring us something that looks like completely different, or you know. So no, I I like I love the pictures, but yeah, I like I said, I nerd out on the details. Like, what ship are they on? What what transporter yeah. room is that? <laughs> well, I would assume they're on the Titan A because that's supposed to be like the main ship of the of the season. But we do see the the launching. I think it's the launching of the Enterprise F in the latest mm -hmm. trailer, and we know that's going to be at least somewhat in there. I think it's good. I think it's going to be a bigger part than they're letting on. Um, you think so? I, I feel like yeah. I think it's just going to be like a shout out at the very like last episode. It'll be like that yeah. that that sh scene with Jonathan Frank saying she's a beauty or whatever it is. Oh, it is. oh, I, I so you you need to catch up on some yeah. of my backlog. Oh, so my theory is because Patrick Stewart slipped up at some point, and he mentions that they're on the D at one point. I I think the D, the D. got taken up, so that, which crashed on Viridian three. Right, but the saucer with the saucer can be recovered. You know, right, I think they yeah. recovered the saucer, and it's in Star Dock as a museum. Fascinating, and they Ooh. go visit it. I, I think that's, I like. That. I think that's what we look at there. So it'll be interesting, but, and it, you know, and he for sure but, slipped up, said it was the D. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool, awesome. I'm very even more excited now. So yeah, I've not full disclosure. I've not seen any of the season two, just season one. So. I'm excited to catch up on season two and then hopefully by that point, season three will be right out yeah. and I can just binge on that. So yeah, super excited. That's awesome. I was, um, I just was finally going through the special features on the season two Blu-ray and uh, I wish, I mean, there's, there's some really good, some special features, like you know, almost an hour long behind the scenes. And I really wish that the way CBS released these things, that they would do it digitally. I would have no problem. I mean, first off, we don't get them on Paramount Plus, not these kinds of special features. So you have to mm. buy it, even though you've been, you know, paying for Paramount Plus. So, okay, that's fair enough. But even if you buy the season on um, iTunes, which you can do, um, you get a couple of these little two-minute features that are just real snippets. 
you don't get anywhere close to uh, what you get on the Blu-ray. And I'm like, hmm. I'd rather just own this digitally. I don't need to own the disc. I'd like my carbon footprint to be a little better. That's on my conundrum. Yes. But yes. if I can only watch it and I'm like, I just, for me, okay, season one of Picard was okay. Season two was a lot better. And I think season three is going to be like, like, you know, super good. Um, but I really enjoy the aesthetic of season two of Picard and the behind the scenes stuff really interested me. So I sprung for the Blu-ray. Now I'm sad that they're not including this, the, the features on, you know, like some the sort digital of releases. Per, yeah. A, a purchase option. I think a lot of people would buy it, honestly. Yeah, I mean, you're paying, like you said, the the, same amount, you're paying the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. Well, and then also, like you said, the carbon footprint. So like looking at my um, old Voyager DVDs, I'm like, that's a lot of plastic. It's a lot of like, just, yeah, a lot of plastic. Right. And so, and I'm like, do I, but the features and stuff, do I, do I go get the Blu-rays? Like, I don't know. I, I That's where I'm kind of torn right now because I want, I'm all about the special features and the documentaries, but carbon footprint wow. is very important to me as well if, if, if you think about like the tng stuff like we bought those vhs's some of us I, yes. I only bought i only bought like favorite episodes mm -hmm. i didn't buy it i wasn't like religiously buying every one and then the blu-rays came out uh or no, sorry i'm sorry the D, the dvds came out in the late yep. 90s or early 2000s and those were big and thick and fat you know and then and the early 2010s, the the super really nice remastered Blu-rays came out, and still those still look better than anything you can stream. So if you have those Blu-rays, they're they're phenomenal, including some of the special recuts that they did. They did five or six individual ones where they took like uh, Redemption Part One and Two and recut it as a movie um, without any of the to be continued in the middle of it or the, yeah. the end credits and the opening credits again. Same thing with um, uh, Best of Both Worlds 1 and 2, um, Chain of Command 1 and 2 are recut as a movie. So um, those are really cool um, and pretty unique. And those even have unique special features on those Blu-rays. So um, anyways. Um, Release yeah, them digitally Paramount. <laughs> like come yes. out with them digitally. Well, the well, and two of them have been. Um, I think Best of Both World and Redemption you can buy for 15 bucks, which is a little much for two episodes. Um, but they don't That's drop the jam. special features. Yeah. Mm. And the whole point we were making there was, you know, how many times we bought and rebought these things and yeah. it's just it's just wasteful to the environment. Yeah. <laughs> for the same product. So we can own them in the most current format. Right. Even even a lot of the movies have been released three or four times now. Um, all right. So then here's some more pictures. Here's Riker and um, Riker and Picard. This picture here that's definitely a model of the Titan A on the wall. So I take it they're on the Titan A for this shot. But it's hard to tell. But Riker's in his captain's uniform, and Picard's in his very much the the admiral type uniform he's been wearing. The last season or so in Picard, and this is—I don't know if they're in Guidance Bar here or what—but uh, enjoying a drink too, which I think we've seen this part of this in the trailer anyway. So, yeah, season three of Picard's coming soon. I think there'll be a lot. I think there's one more trailer to, that's going to come. Um, I know, like Patrick Stewart and Gates McFadden just recorded a ready room with Will Wheaton, but they were pre-taping interviews that will be seen starting in February when um, when it starts to air. So I didn't I didn't realize they made those ready rooms that far in advance, but all right. So my next story I have here for you guys is Star Trek Resurgence. And um, if anyone's following along, Star Trek Resurgence is a video game that is going to be dropping for PC, PlayStation, Xbox, yeah, on just those platforms. Um, and it was supposed to be out already. Um, it got delayed, um, and last it was supposed to come out last month. Um, it's been delayed to April 23, which is not too far away. Um, so that that's coming soon. But the the news this week is that there is a five part comic book series um, that is kind of the 
the pre-story or the backstory, as you would call it, to to Resurgence, uh, the game. So I was able to pick up issue one, which is the only one out so far. Um, issue one has multiple covers, which those of you who are watching can see that. Um, it's, it's an all new crew of the Resolute. Yes, I said that right. I do retain what I read. Um, <laughs> um, the Resolute, um, they get a mission that Leah Brahms, who we all know is uh, the woman that Jordy LaForge had holodeck sex with and then stalked. Um, <laughs> Awkward. Um, she's working on developing a new warp engine and you find out that she actually was banned from it. It, her work with Posa stopped because she was starting to work with a new type of a rare type of dilithium that's highly unstable. So um, Starfleet actually paused her, her research and she kind of went rogue, they think. And um, so she is in Telerian space. And here's another TNG callback. The Telerians we saw in TNG, the episode Suddenly Human, um, where there's the human boy who was rescued by Telerians and raised as one. And Picard and company come across Jonah. Jono? Jono? Jonah. Jono. Uh, I think it was Jono. Jono. I just saw it. it was Jono. Jono. Yeah. And he was supposed to, uh, Picard was supposed to take him back home and reunite him with his grandparents. But then the Telerians come looking for him and Jono actually wants to go back to the Telerians. So, um, but they're a very aggressive, um, warlike species. Um, so they're involved and I don't know. That's what we got so far is we got, we've got top secret warp engines. We've got Leah Brahms being kidnapped by the Telerians. We've got a whole new crew of the resurgence and, um, and all new crew members, and so we're we're going to get five five uh, issues of this now. Um, and here's some here's some screenshots from Suddenly Human. Um, of the Jono there. What, what was that guy's name? Chad Allen, I think, was the actor. He was like a little he's a little hot throb in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, little, back in the day. Back in back in his day, um, he used to be on the cover of all the little teeny bopper uh, magazines. I remember. So, what is your um, you're a gamer, uh, Alex? Mm -hmm. uh, what yeah. You, what, what do you, how are you feeling about Resurgence? So, as a gamer of Star Trek, of uh, you know, being a Star Trek gamer, there's a lot of misses. There are more misses than than hits, and so I'm kind of going into it hoping it's going to be a hit, but okay, very well it could be a miss. Um, it's giving me vibes of if anyone's played Hidden Evil, Star Trek Hidden Evil, which was based on uh, Insurrection. And uh, Star Trek, uh, shoot, uh, I can't think of the name. Uh, it, Elite Force, sorry. No, Elite oh. Force. Uh, Elite Force. So there's a first person shooter game called Elite Force. And so it's giving me vibes of like the first person shooter aspect of Elite Force, but Hidden Evil, because Hidden Evil was like, you're down on the earth or on the planet. You're doing a lot of different puzzles. You're There's not like shooting and all that stuff. So it's more puzzle based. So seeing the, the trailers and stuff, it seems like it's, more long of a puzzle instead of a shooting game. Um, at, but I'm really excited um, for an actual Star Trek game to come out. Like I said, the last one that I've been playing is is Star Trek Online, and that, that seems pretty fun. But this one seems more like, a, a, it seems like an episode if you watch the trailers, and I, it's very immerse, immersive. There's supposed to be a lot. I, I want to say the, the script for this game is like massive because there's so many different you know choose to kind of choose your own outcome kind of things right and so that the world is pretty huge in which this game exists and they're really building it out so and um, so that's why i'm reason... scared that's why i'm scared like i said there's a lot to it so it could be an awesome time like you could be really yeah. immersed into it and lose yourself into it and i hope that's the experience um or yeah. it could be a must i'm i i give them kudos for like pausing the release of this game to fix the problems because there's nothing worse than them dropping a game and there's issues and we have to wait for patches and things like that too. Ruins the experience um, for sure. And looking back on Star Trek games, a lot of their downfall was the fact that they were pre were not they were pushed out too early or the upkeep on them wasn't you know done. And so yeah, development's really important on these games. And if you want something good, you gotta you gotta wait till it's ready and it'll be ready when it's ready. Yeah. 
Well, there's a lot riding on this one. I am definitely looking forward to it. And I really enjoyed issue one of the comic. It it it's set in 20 2380, which is like it's like the year after Nemesis, I think. Um mm. in, in the grand scheme of things. It's right there, kind of where lower decks is in their timeline. Um yeah. So it, they're, they're, everyone's wearing Nemesis era uniforms and the Resolute's a little badass ship. I don't know um, if this picture here is, this is the, this is the Resolute in the comics. I don't know if this image that's part of the gameplay is the actual Resolute in the game. Kind of hope not. I kind of like this like old school, like it's like they took the top part of the Miranda class and glued it to the bottom yeah. of a saucer kind of dig that <laughs> yeah um, no, i agree but i'm really looking but, forward to it no i i it's funny i you mentioned the uniforms i really like the fact that it's taking place in this era it's actually my favorite era of all the star treks um the whole you know timeline and the uniform honestly the uniform i really dig the uniform from this era i don't know what the the, the shoulders with the the red undertone or the color yeah my fave i think that should be that should be a next question a, a new question you should ask what is what era is your favorite uniform because there's i like there's a lot to pick from mm. yeah Mm-hmm. actually and because um they just love um they love that over there and see and, and ever since discovery in 2017 it just seems like they can't stop inventing enough new uniforms even yeah. picard from season to season has like introduced new uniforms yeah no i'm, I'm really upset i was not able to get my hands on an Anno, anovos was it that brand that was making the uniforms back in the day like the production right. quality ones and I, you I ordered one. I ordered one and I never got it. I was super upset. I got the jacket. I got the undershirt. No, I ordered the jacket and the undershirt. I got the undershirt. Never got the jacket. Yeah, so like they owe me. Oh, the, those assholes owe me like $900 <laughs> that I prepaid. Yeah, it's, it's, extor- and they're, it's just, they should just be in jail to be. They need to. Uh, they need to. They did us so wrong. Yeah. I ordered a Discovery uniform uh, that I never got. I ordered the. What was it called the Voyager jumpsuit? The yeah. undershirt, the the gray undershirt. I just that I was going to be my next order. Yeah, yeah. It was like a, it was like one hundred and fifty bucks or something like that. It wasn't like it was, or you know, one hundred twenty five or something. So it's like, geez, come on, guys. You guys have no problem taking money, making people pay up front, and then you never send them their stuff. But yeah. and then they like, oh, we closed that company and now we renamed it and we're open to something else. It's just it's shady. <laughs> It's shady. very shady business. Yeah. So also shout out to anyone who is a cool costume maker. I need to get myself a jacket. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still hurting. I'm I'm still I'm still hurt about that. All right. So our last question before we go here, Alex, is if you could create the next Trek series, what would it be? Next Trek series. Um, hot take, but I actually want a Picard style series, but Janeway, like, listen, I just want an Admiral Janeway show. I want to see what she's doing. I want to see what she's been up to. And yeah, let's, let's put her on some adventures, but like, like she joked with, uh, with Jean-Luc, he always gets the easy missions. Let's, let's give her some easy missions and see how she handles it. So, so yeah, that would be my vote, a, a Janeway series for sure. Whether it's going to be Rafi and seven having a show with Janeway somehow in there or Janeway having her own show. Um, I would just love to see a continuation of the Picard timeline with, and, yep. and obviously bring back live action Janeway in a really cool, meaningful way. Thank you very much for coming on, Alex. I appreciate that. Especially you're kind of short notice. Um, I know. Well, thanks for having me. Like it, this was, I yeah got the early, very short warning and I was like, you know what? Why not? Let's, let's do this. Let's go on this adventure and see where it takes us. Yeah, it's, 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 I love it. I'm really glad you came on today because, like I said, getting you know we we've DM'd a little bit on Twitter before, but mm-hmm. didn't really know much about you at all. Um, and you actually you don't live too far away. I'm in San Diego, so you know you're in, you're in Phoenix. Phoenix Metro. Yep. So any trekkers yeah. out in the Phoenix Metro, I'm trying to build a social circle. So shout out to all y'all. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, so I was supposed to have Alex Alexander Rodriguez on this week. Um, he's his mom has um, not been well and he's taking care mm. of her so that he's hoping to be on next week. So I, I traded an Alex for an Alex, at least, you know, <laughs> we would love to hear what you thought of today's episode and hope you'll join our Facebook group, the BQ and collective to continue our discussion there. You can also tweet your thoughts to at what's the T Bev. 
we would love for you to reach out. Please follow the network on Twitter and Instagram at BQN Podcast. Don't forget all of our other great shows on the BQN like Galaxy Class, All Good Things, Union Federation, Infinite Diversity, Mystery, Mickey's Marvels, and Histories with the Zalagis. I almost said Mystery with the Zalagis on top of Mickey's Marvels. I'm just blending them all together. And of course, our newest show, Trexpert Quiz. So, Alex, where can people find you? So, not really on social media other than uh, just the Twitter. Follow me at Alex2287. That's awesome. And, folks, you can find me at, at Greek Geek SD or, as we said, at What's the T-Bev. Please hit the like and subscribe button here on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a star rating and a written review. That helps others find the show. At this time, we would like to thank our associate producers, Davey Willett, and our newest associate producer, Matt Harker. If you would like to help us keep all of our shows coming to you each week, you can become a patron of, our net, of the network on Patreon. Join the Hive to enjoy It's Green, Amy's Math Moments, and other network perks. With a monthly subscription of $5 or more, you can join our meetings, The Hive Mind, on the second Saturday of each month. Visit patreon.com forward slash BQN to get all of the details and watch your messages. Once again, thank you for listening, and we hope you'll join us next time for more tea on What's the Tea Bath? <laughs>